Uh, example 11 is the classic parallel plate capacitor. And that looks, uh, it's rather trivial. It looks like you just have two, well, the exact geometry doesn't matter too much as long as they're surfaces and they're parallel to each other. So, and then the top one can have like a plus charge and the bottom one has a minus charge. Uh, they both have area A and they're separated by a distance D. And one of the key constraints is that the area is much larger than D, which is pretty important. Um, you can imagine um, that doesn't quite work out uh, as well if you have, the math isn't quite as easy if the parallel plates are far away from each other. So uh, because they're very close to each other, um, sigma is going to be very constant. And I say very constant because it, it, around the edges, it's going to be a little funky, but for the most part, it's going to be constant. It's constant enough. Okay, so I'm going to say very constant. And this is the time when the physicists use a word kind of meaning the opposite. So, I mean, something is constant or it's not. Very constant means it's almost constant. <laughs> so um, basically, sigma is going to be equal to uh, the charge on a plate divided by the total area of that plate, Q over A. So the electric field is equal to 1 over epsilon naught uh, Q over A. And where do we get this from? Well, back in example five, we used a pillbox uh, Gaussian surface to figure out what the electric field is due to a um, due to a, a surface. And then we found out that when you have two two surfaces like this, in between the electric field is twice the strength of any one surface, and outside the electric field is zero. So the electric field on the inside, um, I should put in, so we don't get confused, is one over epsilon naught q over a. So um, what's the potential between the two? Well, the potential is just the integral um, minus E vector dot DL vector. So the E vector is constant. The distance is D. So it's basically 1 over epsilon naught Q over A. And the distance is D. D. OK? And um, oh, well, the, the sine's flip. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the capacitance is equal to the charge over the potential. Well, the charge is Q. The potential is Q over A times D. So we get an epsilon naught at the top. We get an A at the top. And we get a D at the bottom. OK? That's pretty much all there is to it in calculating the capacitance for this configuration. Uh, Gauss's law made it extremely trivial. So anyway, have fun.